everyone, my name is Sandhya Garg and some of you might remember me from Project Runway Season 13. I'm going to be teaching you how to do seams without serger today. A lot of us don't have uh, enough space to buy a serger and you know when we are doing our projects we always think that oh my god I wish I had a serger. So I'm going to teach you how to do these beautiful seams without using a serger so you can make your quilts your cushion covers your clothing without using a serger um, most of these these seams are relevant for uh, medium to heavyweight fabrics but there are one or two seams that could be used for lightweight fabrics and as and when i'm doing it i'm going to share that uh, detail with you as well The materials to practice seams that you would need are a basic sewing machine, whatever you have, whichever machine you have works just fine. We need some fabric, I'm using medium weight crepe, uh, just some rough fabric that I have. I have a pinking scissors uh, right here, so this is sort of has that zigzag blade that you would need. I have um, these cutting scissors right here so you would need that to cut your fabric oops and then probably somewhere if i need a pair of tweezers and uh, an awl a pen a uh, marking pen so this pen what it does is when i mark, mark my fabric and if i steam or wet it out it disappears do try it out out on your fabric before you use it easily available at any of the fabric shops that you would have some pins and some uh, pre-made uh, binding and we would do a seam with that as well a decorative seam with this one so let's start so I'm using a domestic machine it's a brother uh, limited edition machine but the settings your machine needs to be on needs to be on a straight stitch of it you usually keep it from 2.5 to 3 inches in length so just make sure those are the settings when you start working with the machine so uh, let's start with our very first seam I've cut these letter size uh, fabric uh, pieces for us to work with I'm going to just cut it in half and then start with our first seam so the very uh, first seam that I'm doing is uh, it's gonna I'm gonna start with a plain seam we always start with a plain seam so I'm gonna leave uh, about an inch of fabric usually you know when you're working with seams when you are very comfortable working with seams you mostly leave one centimeter seam allowance but it's always it always depends on the project you're doing so right now i'm leaving one inch seam allowance when i'm starting off with my first seam which is a plain seam I'll just lock my seam make sure you lock your seams very important otherwise they just come off so let's do this. Okay, again usually the if it's a printed fabric you know which is the right and the wrong side right now it's just that the right and the wrong side are pretty similar so i'm writing it down it's going to go away with water so this is my plain seam that i have stitched and it's a closed uh, seam right now so i'm just going to open it and iron it down you can press it with the hand and then sort of iron it so uh, I'm going to go iron it. This is how my plain seam looks. This is the right side of the fabric when you're done stitching. Perfect, perfect for lightweight fabric or a medium weight or a heavy weight. That's the basic you start with. Now that I have this, I'm going to 
take a pinking scissors and pink my ends so you just carefully cut these ends off what this pinking scissor does it stops your fabric from fraying you don't want uh, threads coming off so it sort of you know stops it from fraying so I'm just uh, doing the ends right now you could uh, let's put this away and same with the other side so now if it frays it's just these little triangles that are gonna fray and it's not gonna go ahead and unravel so we want that we don't want our fabrics coming undone <laughs> so that's important let's we have that side done as well now I have my two pinked edges so you can you can do it two ways if you don't want anything on this side you could just stitch your fabric right here to stop it from fraying so let me do uh, that and then also show you a top stitched uh, plain seam so that the top stitches can add to the beauty of it but you can you can choose either of those two so let me just stitch it on one side and show you how that works so I'm just making this stitch right here it's on the wrong side of fabric also known as the seam excess and you lock your stitch and cut it yeah so when you take this off of the machine that's how it's gonna look it's not gonna fray at all you know your seams done you don't have to worry about it and it still looks neat and clean this is the right side of the fabric You could also, on the other side, I'm going to show you the other way to do it. So you could just put your uh, machine down and then just do lock your stitch. Make sure your stitch is even because if it's not even, it's not going to add to the beauty. Now it's not going to fray, we've stitched it down and this is how it's going to look like on the right side. And we can do that here as well, so it sort of looks like a beauty stitch, like a decorative seam. Knocking your fabric and then doing the stitch. And that's it so this is how the seam looks with the right side I've, I'm using a navy blue thread right now to just show you how it looks you could use any thread color or same as shell but it's gonna still add to a design feature it's gonna make your project look interesting and this is how it looks from the back side obviously we don't have to do that and just you know have these two stitches it's it's done it's not gonna fray the seams gonna stay good forever so that's your one seam plain seam with top stitches done right here so let's let's do the second seam now i have my two uh, pieces of fabric cut here again this is the wrong side of fabric wrong uh, and I'm gonna just make a cross here wrong side of fabric this is my right side of fabric so let me just keep it down here we are doing the second uh, decorative seam and I'm gonna be using these uh, you get these ready-made uh, bindings to finish the seam it looks really nice so and again it's uh, it can be done for a lightweight fabric or a medium weight or a heavy weight when I say lightweight, I mean chiffon or georgette or thin crepe. When I say medium weight, it's poplin, it's medium weight cotton or your, um, you know, 
medium weight even you could even do it with medium weight knit and when i say heavy weight i mean heavy tweeds and wool fabric or if you want to do a faux suede so you know this is uh, sort of the weights how they work so let's do it and see how it works i'm going to start with a plain seam again at a one inch seam allowance it works well if you do it at a half inch seam allowance or at a three four inch as well but right here i'm just doing it with one inch uh, let's start and let's lock our stitch I'm gonna press down my seam flat and then we're gonna do it so that, so this is the wrong side of the fabric and our right side is all nice pretty and clean so let's do that now I have pressed it down under pressing is very important it sort of makes your seams look really really neat and clean so that's how it looks from the uh, right side of the fabric and that's the wrong side and now I'm gonna be adding this uh, binding right here so if you see usually these bindings are either the same size or the or one side is a little longer than the other side so when that happens you want to make sure you put this under the fabric and this over the fabric so that you always when you stitch on top you always get the other end inside and you know you don't miss a stitch so that sort of you know is this little trick that helps so all i'm gonna do is i'm gonna Put my seam here, put this binding in and sort of sandwich my seam excess into the binding and then if it helps you could just pin it up and then stitch it or if, if you are you know confident you could just stitch it straight away. So I've put my fabric, uh, I've sandwiched my fabric within the binding. And I'm just gonna stitch on the edge of the binding so here we go make sure I've locked my uh, stitch make sure you lock your stitch and then here you go you could use a thicker binding this is uh, about one fourth of an inch you could use a thicker one if you like so just you know just keep it flat and sort of put it in center if it helps you can use the tweezer to push it in and then just sort of do this so just making it neat and clean with the tweezer probably just need to pull that out locking your seam again and that's about it so let's cut the binding off so this is how it looks and this is the wrong side and can you see, I mean you can can you see how pretty that looks I mean I could make a sleeve detail out of it it's really pretty you could also do it for your cushions for your quills and you know it probably could be the right side of the fabric fabric because it's so pretty to look at you could use a thicker binding you know so many so many options right there let me finish it by doing the next side too i'll just uh, twist my fabric again sandwich it in and then let's go from here <laughs> And this is 
another pretty finished seam decorative seam without using a serger you don't need a serger you have the seam done you could use a colorful binding a printed binding or the same color as your base wrong side of fabric right side of fabric finish seam two This is the third seam that we are doing and it's the French seam. It's really famous, it gives a beautiful finishing and I highly recommend it for lightweight to sort of, you know, a little medium weight fabrics, it's fine, but it's not recommended for heavyweight fabrics. It's best done for your lightweight chiffons, for your georgettes and probably um, sort of, you know, medium weight cotton, cotton poplin or your lawns or voile fabric. It's perfect for those fabrics. So a fun fact about French seam, in India the Indian name for French seam is Lot Port. I, I feel it's really cute so I'm just going to say it again, Lot Port. So for the French seam you work on your right side of the fabric, so this is my right side of the fabric right side and you start stitching on that you sort of uh, make a small stitch here and probably I'm using seam allowance of 1 4th inch you have to chop that off too French seam is usually just 1 4th inch thick so 1 4th inch uh, stitch right here right here so let's do it This is the right side of the fabric and this is how it looks right now. I'm gonna, before I iron it off, I'm gonna trim the excess. So I'm gonna probably make it sort of, you know, three, like one eighth of an inch. So, you know, chop it in half. If you can start off by making a one eighth of a stitch, you need to leave your seam allowance accordingly. For this particular seam, your seam allowance is half an inch. So that's about it. It's not one inch seam allowance. So let that be. Uh, I've chopped it off to one eighth of an inch. Now I'm gonna open my seam. You don't have to open this right here. You just need to uh, open the seam and uh, you know, iron it flat down. So I'm gonna do that and then come back. So now I've uh, ironed my fabric. This is the right side and this is the wrong side. So the wrong side will sort of look like, you know, like what you've been seeing before, the right side of the fabric. So this is the wrong side. I've ironed, I have uh, ironed my seam flat, then I've sort of closed it and re-ironed it. And, and when it finishes, you'll see how well finished a French seam looks like. So I'm just gonna put it together and stitch it again at one fourth seam, one fourth inch seam allowance. So let's start.
that's about it this is French seam so this is the wrong side of your fabric and it's gonna sort of make this tube right here and this is the right side of your fabric and it looks completely neat you can iron this down and then you will have this really pretty tubed uh, seam totally finished from inside no raw edges it's gonna last you a lifetime French seam I'm gonna do our fourth seam now it's the basic lapped seam uh, probably the first one in the lap seam series it's uh, best suited for medium to heavyweight fabrics so you want to do this seam for your heavyweight cottons your denims your uh, twills your uh, tweed heavyweight wool for leather vinyl for suede you know those sort of fabrics So we start with the wrong side of fabric. So this is our uh, wrong side. I'm just making crosses. Wrong side of fabric. It's really easy and you don't need a serger to do this seam. So I'm just gonna give half an inch of seam allowance for this seam. And do it right here. We'll start with the plain seam my seam so now I've got just you know done this basic seam right here what you need to do you need to just uh, Take a pinking scissors and pink both the ends really neatly. Make sure your pinking scissor is new and you know works perfectly. And that's it. I'm gonna I'm going to open my seam and press it down to one side. I don't want to open the seam right here. I want to just keep it to one side and press it down. So I'm going to do that and come back. So this is how it looks when I've ironed it. I've sort of, you know, ironed it one side. So, you know, if you're making a garment, you want to make sure if it's a right or a left side seam, it needs to be ironed to the same side so that you get the same effect so it's ironed down on the same side and i've sort of got this bulk on one side now and the other side is neat and clean so what i'm gonna do this is the right side of the fabric i'm just gonna do a neat top stitch right here so when i do that it's you know and if you wash the fabric it sort of have that very interesting texture to it texture to the seam so it, it works very well in it when it's denim or twill Let's just keep it flat and start with this stitch, lock our stitch. So I, this is finished now. And this is the right side of my fabric. If you see from close, you've got this interesting texture happening. So it sort of becomes this, you know, nice design detail. And on the back side, that's how it looks. Just two stitches, simple, neat and clean. Your fabric's not gonna fray. Your project is done. Are doing our fifth seam now and this is the famous seam that you sort of see on your denims it's uh, the lap seam the basic lap seam was on is in the side seam or sometimes the inseam and you know the other side the seam you have is this flat felt seam that we do so it's pretty easy if you see how it's done it's not that complicated 
this is the wrong side of the fabric so I'm just going to mark crosses on it cross cross I'm going to my seam allowance is going to be half an inch half an inch seam allowance lock our fabric So now I have a half inch seam right here on the wrong side of the fabric. What I want to do, I want to, from the two of these, I want to cut one into half and then sort of bind this side, sandwich this side under the other side and then do a top stitch. So this sort of gives you an interesting texture and stitch. So I'm going to cut half of the seam allowance off. So it's half in seam allowance, I'm going to cut one fourth and then iron it to uh, prepare it for my final stitch. So let's cut it. You can just cut it with a straight scissors. No need to pink it. Half down. Half or more. I mean, so it should be one fourth inch or, you know, three eighths of an inch. this off cut my seam allowance just for one seam so this is how it's gonna look one is smaller one is bigger and you want to sort of fold this over sandwich the other part and then lay it on the other side and then do a top stitch here so I'm just going to iron all of this to prepare it for my final stitch now So now I have pressed the fabric, if you can see it's neatly pressed and this is the right side of the fabric. It's all neat and clean, there's no top stitch uh, right as of now. Uh, if you see it's all pressed on one side, I have a small side of the fabric and like a big side so I have to sandwich the smaller uh, extra in the bigger extra, let me do that again, small extra with the big extra side sandwiched and I have to iron it, I have to press it down to get a neat stitch. I'm going to press it now. So now you see I have pressed it neatly. It's all pressed down. I'm going to, if you see it's sandwich proper pressed. Now I'm just going to put it on the other side where I see no raw edges as soon as I put it on the other side and then I'm going to do an edge stitch. I'll show that again. So how it is uh, sandwiched between and then we are just going to take it to the other side and do a top stitch so that we have no raw edges showing. And that's it you're done so this is how it actually looks on the right side you've got this interesting texture going on here and this is how it looks on the wrong side you could make this into a right side and make this sort of a design feature for your garment but uh, and then obviously you know let me go and press it and show you the final product and then you can see how the right and the wrong side look So this is the right side of the fabric and if you see this you can just see one more stitch and it looks super neat and clean and you will sort of have this interesting texture going on right here and that's the back side done project done it's going to stay for a lifetime very strong seam used uh, 
as a staple in your denims and that's why your denims last for so long. So we've learned today five uh, scenes without using a serger, just with your home machine. And um, we started off with our plain seam right here and you know, did uh, learn two ways to do it neatly with or without the top stitch and then we did a seam with binding plain seam with binding and then the third one was french seam the fourth one was the basic lapped seam and the fifth one was the flat felt seam that's also in the lapped seam series no need of serger just your machine and your creativity and you can play around with these, these seams to make it as much fun and as much of a design element as you want. I hope you enjoyed uh, seeing this video and learning from it. I really enjoyed uh, showing you how to do these scenes. If you have any feedback, you know, why don't you send it to me, write your E write emails to me or you know send your feedback if you want to learn something I would love to make a video for you for all your suggestions and if you've tried these scenes at home what was your experience share it with me I would love to hear from you find my work and interesting videos on creativelivingworks.com